Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I love cargo bikes. I'm here with three different cargo bikes. I believe that everybody could benefit from a cargo bike, whether you're hauling kids or stuff. It's a great way for you to be able to ride your bike instead of driving your car. And when you ride your bike, you're going to be happier. It's going to save you money. It's better for the environment and it's good for your health. So definitely consider a cargo bike. And if you're watching this video, you probably are. I've got the Felt Brew Hall, which is a long tail cargo bike. I've got the Spicy Curry, which also has the long tail. And I've got the Reese and Muller Paxter, which as you can see is a box cargo bike. Now I've done an in-depth video review of each of these three bikes on our website at citruscycles.ca. If you head over to our website at citruscycles.ca, you can find the detailed specs, the current pricing, you can find our contact info. So if you have further questions or want some advice on which cargo bike would work best for you, you can contact us. Call, email, reach out to us on Facebook. As well, we've got all these bikes here so you can try them. That's the ideal way to find the best bike for you is to come and give them a try. But I've ridden all these bikes myself. Like I said, I've got the detailed reviews on our website. I spent a lot of time on cargo bikes, trying them all out. And so what I want to do in this video is just kind of give you an overview of the main differences between these three to help you decide what would be best for your needs. So it's going to be a little bit random. I'm going to try to remember to go through everything. I've got so many things to say about each of these bikes because like I said I've spent quite a bit of time on all of them. Um, hopefully I'll remember everything. So let me start by saying obviously we've got two different styles here. We do have the long tail where we've got the cargo space on the back. That's the felt through haul here. Um, we've got uh, your loading deck for kids or for stuff above the rear wheel. Same with the uh, Yuba Spicy Curry. We've got this uh, uh, small wheel on the back and a big loading area. The advantage of a long tail bike is that it's really a very easy transition. In fact, it's seamless. When you come and you try the Brew Hall or you try the Spicy Curry, they ride exactly like regular bikes you won't notice the extra length you won't notice that it feels longer it'll just ride like a regular bike you put some weight on the back there you get some kids on the back there it's still very stable and you're really not going to notice that it uh, rides like a um, anything other than a regular bike with a box bike once you get used to it rides like a regular bike in fact i think of the three the one i have the most fun on is actually the Paxter with the box in the front. And I don't know why, it's just, it's so much fun. It's just, uh, sometimes I take it when I'm riding and I don't need to bring cargo along just because it's a fun bike to ride. Um, now there's some advantages and disadvantages to each style. Um, certainly with, once you get used to the, the box here, and this is the, this is the Paxter 80. So there are three versions of the Paxter. You can get the Paxter 80, which has this massive 80 centimeter box on the front. You don't even actually need to get the box. You can get it without the box if you wish. Um, they make the Paxter 60, which is obviously 60 centimeters, so it's shorter. And I'm really excited about the new Paxter 40, which is kind of like a crossover cargo bike. It's not much longer than a regular bike, um, but again, you've got the box in the front and they've done some really neat things to try to get you into it and out of your car because now you've got places to put your stuff. You can even get a locking glove compartment with the Paxter 40, so that's really cool. But if you need to put two kids in here like I do, then of course the Paxter 60 or Paxter 80 is a way to go. With the Paxter 40, you are limited to one child. Speaking of children, that's kind of one of the, the differences between these bikes with the, with the box and with the long tail. So with the long tail, obviously your kids are going to be behind you. You can put them in yep child seats, for example, if they're a little bit older. You could get monkey bars on both the uh, Yuba Spicy Curry here and the uh, Brew Hall to keep the kids in, gives them something to hang on to. You can get footboards so that uh, they have somewhere to put their feet again on both of these bikes, but they are going to be behind you. Um, with the box bike, kids are going to be in front of you. 
that gives you a better opportunity to keep your eye on them and to communicate with them. But when I take my daughter for in the Paxer, she loves sitting up at the front here, leaning against the back. Obviously, I take the cover off. <laughs> and uh, she can, we can have this little chat. She's looking at me, I'm looking at her. It's nice, it's fun, it's uh, cozy. Uh, we have good conversations while we're, while we're riding on the bike. So you may like having your precious cargo, that is your kids, in the front where you can see them. Um, she loves that. Um, but, uh, you know, having them on the back is uh, some advantages as well. And uh, certainly you can then put child seats, uh, which can be really uh, convenient. And um, uh, although I should point out, you can actually get the Paxter with a rear carrier like I've done here. It's an option. And with that rear carrier, you can put pannier bags on. As you can see, I've got the uh, pannier bag on here. Let me just pull that off. And um, because of that, you could actually put a child seat on the back here if you wanted to. So if you wanted a couple kids up front and one on the rear, you could do that. It's a very sturdy rack. And this rack does come with a built-in bungee cord, which is uh, really cool, very convenient if you need to add more cargo capacity than the box that's in the front. So that's handy. And, uh, you know, all of these bikes have fenders and lights built in. That's all part of uh, what you get with the bike. Um, speaking of pannier bags, I should mention that the felt actually comes with two massive pannier bags. I love these bags. They have a uh, um, zip up divider in here, so you can actually divide that into two. And they come with a rain cover. So uh, here on Vancouver Island, you get a lot of rain. And so it's nice having that. You can fit a pizza box in there and you can fit a four liter of milk and all of those things. What I like about the brew halls rack, uh, it comes with the uh, bamboo boards. With the spicy curry, that's an additional extra that you have to buy if you want those uh, boards. And with the brew hall rack, and of course with the uh, Paxter rack over there, you can fit standard pannier bags, up to four on the uh, brew hall and uh, two on the uh, Paxter. With the spicy curry yuba, the bars are just too wide to put standard pannier bags on. So you are stuck putting um, with their bags. Now, their bags are awesome. I have nothing uh, but good things to say about them. But you can't put standard pannier bags on there. So these are the uh, to-go bags, which are really expandable, very versatile. You can do a lot with them. But you are going to have to use their bags because this tubing is too wide to put uh, pannier bags on on the rack. And I understand that they really did that for strength. I mean, you can see we've got some massive three sets of massive tubing in here. And that allows you to have this uh, weight rating of uh, 300 pounds on the rear rack. So lots of uh, capacity but uh, you are going to need to use their to-go bags, um, which are awesome, um, but you wouldn't be able to put fan standard penny bags on like you can on the uh, brew hall and on the Paxter. Uh, the cool thing about the Paxter 40, which I don't have yet, um, is that you can get a carry system instead of a box on the front, and with that carry system, you can actually put uh, penny bags up there as well as on the rack, so you've got lots of different options. As far as mounting options go, um, the neat thing about uh, Yuba and their spicy curry is that they've got lots and lots of accessories. So you'll notice there's a couple attachment points here. Uh, you can actually put uh, a rack on the front, they call it a bread basket. It's got a really high weight capacity because it's part of the uh, frame rather than uh, you know hanging on the stem or something like that so that when you steer it doesn't move, which is good because you don't want it shifting the uh, balance around. Um, so with, uh, with Yuba you've got lots of different uh, options like that. With the Paxter, um, as I mentioned, you can get it without the box, you can get it with the box, you can get it with uh, kid seats. So they actually put in cushions for them to sit in a backrest and seat belts. Uh, you can see I've got a cargo cover on here. You can get a kid's cover that comes up high and is clear uh, to keep them dry. Um, so there's lots of uh, cool options with that. Like I mentioned with the Paxter 40, you can even get uh, a uh, locking glove compartment, which is pretty cool. Um, for the felt, 
Um, they really don't have a whole lot of things. You do get uh, the option of having footboards. They do make the, the monkey bars, which is cool. They make some really cool uh, cushions for the uh, back seat, and you can also get that with uh, spicy curry. They have a couple different sizes of cushions. Those attach with Velcro. The, and you could actually use those ones on the brew hall, attaching them by Velcro. The brew hall actually has ones that bolt on uh, for security to the uh, boards here. So that's kind of cool as well. So all three bikes really do have a lot of uh, options and flexibility in terms of the accessories that you can use. You can see I've got these hold-on bars here for the spicy curry. That actually attaches to the seat post and so would actually fit on the uh, brew hall as well. Of course, with the Packster, that's not necessary because you've got the kids sitting in the uh, front box here, which is great because you can keep your eye on them as well. Uh, so let me go through a few other things that are uh, similar and different between the units. Um, let me start with the drive system. So these are all Bosch, which is awesome. I love Bosch drives. Very reliable, very natural, very safe, and uh, plenty of power. The brew hall uses the performance line from Bosch, whereas the spicy curry uh, is using the CX, and so is the Riesen Mueller Paxter also using the CX. The CX drive gives you more torque than the performance line. That means it's going to give you more power for climbing hills, and I do notice that with the Paxter and the spicy curry. Now. Felt gets away with putting the performance line on the brew hall because the bike itself is really lightweight. It's the lightest of all the cargo bikes. It's, it's incredible how they've managed to make it really strong, but also really lightweight. So the performance line works pretty well with the uh, brew hall. If I could change it, you know, I probably would put the CX on there because I like having that increased torque for climbing hills. Gives you a little bit more assistance in the uh, upper levels. Of course, it's also going to use your battery a little bit quicker. Speaking of battery, the Paxter comes with the Bosch Power Pack 500, which gives you a 25% increase in range over the previous Power Pack 400. And you can do dual batteries. So somewhere way underneath here, there is, there it is. It's wrapped in a protective little neoprene box there, or a protector. You can do dual batteries. So with the Paxter, you can actually do a thousand watt hours, a kilowatt hour of power, which is incredible. So you can put this up into turbo and ride a very, very long distance because of that fact that you can do the dual batteries. Both the Spicy Curry and the Brew Hall come with the Power Pack 400. Now, fortunately, the Bosch uh, batteries are backwards compatible, so you can put a 500 power pack on either of these bikes if you wanted to, but they aren't dual battery uh, capable. So you'd need to bring a second battery in a pannier bag if you wanted to do that, or in the to-go bag on the uh, Spicy Curry. All three batteries can be charged on or off the frame. Felt has put a little bit of a sticker on here. Uh, if you were to put a 500 watt hour, it wouldn't have that sticker, but uh, I don't think it's going to affect how the bike looks. Whereas both the Paxter and the Spicy Curry, they just use the plain Bosch battery with the no uh, sticker on there at all. So they're very easy to interchange. So let's see, I've talked about uh, the drive system and the battery. While I'm talking about the drive system, I'll just point out the chain lines on the two bikes here that use the chain. So with the brew hall, you can see we've got a chain guard here, a cover. I really like that actually uh, because this is the type of, with a cargo bike, it's not like I want to get dressed to ride my bike. I just want to be able to hop on it and go to work or do my errands or take my daughter to school or ballet or take my son to soccer. Whatever I'm doing, it's nice having that chain guard. It is a very long chain, of course, to the back here, and so they need to do something to keep the chain from sagging. So we do have a little chain guide here, and we have a little pulley down here. When you deploy the kickstand, and I'll try to remember to talk about kickstands in a moment, um, sometimes this chain will pop off the pulley. So you do need to keep your eye on that and then just put it back on um, if it does fall off. Um, since I pointed it out to you, if you're careful deploying and, and undeploying, I don't know if that's a word, um, putting the kickstand back up, um, you won't have that problem. But if you're not paying attention, like sometimes I'm not paying attention, then it may fall off. Uh, so they've done it something a little bit different here on the spicy curry. They've actually put the 
chain guide up here with a, a larger pulley and a guide here. So this is very unlikely to come off, um, but it's fairly likely that you're gonna maybe rub your pant leg on there. There's no chain guard. So, you know, what I've suggested in my other videos, get one of those Velcro things that wrap around your pant leg and just attach it to your frame so that it's always there. Remember to take it off and put it back on when you're done. Ah, now the Packster. So, because the cargo is in the front, we can do a short chain, or in this case, we actually have a Gates carbon belt. Now, you can order the Packster with a cassette and chain and derailleur like the other bikes have, um, but you can also get it with this NuVinci CVT, which is fantastic. Check out my video review of the Packster to find out more about that. And then this zero maintenance carbon fiber belt. So, if I ride in the rain, which I do a lot, I don't have to do anything to this belt. I don't have to oil it, I don't have to clean it, I don't have to worry about getting grease on my pants. Um, there isn't a chain guard, well, because there's no chain. <laughs> so they didn't put a belt guard because really there's no need for that. So I do love having the belt and the CVT. It's a fantastic system. Um, I should also point out, so I'm gonna talk about, well, let me talk about kickstands first, and then I'm gonna talk about tires and where the chain and derailleur is on those. Okay, so the Paxter kickstand. This is an awesome, awesome, super duper kickstand. I can deploy that kickstand without needing to lift the bike at all. I just push it down and pull the bike, roll the bike backwards. To release it, I just roll the bike forwards. I don't have to lift up at all. So it's really easy to deploy. Super stable as you can see. So I can get both my kids, you know, jumping in and out of the cargo bike box as kids are wont to do without worrying about the bike tipping over. Love that kickstand. Spicy Curry's got a really long one-legged kickstand to try to help with the stability. Optional upgrade, and that's kind of, you know, a theme here with, with the Spicy Curry. There's lots of upgrades you can add, but they're not coming with the bike. So this is the kickstand that comes with the bike. You can get a dual leg kickstand that's going to give you a lot more weight capacity. I don't remember, if you check on our website, I think it'll say what the weight capacity is with this kickstand. But, you know, it's... I'm not sure that it have put the kickstand down and then say, yeah, go ahead and jump on and off the bike without me balancing or stabilizing the bike. I can totally do that with the uh, Paxter. With the Brew Hall, we do have the uh, dual leg kickstand that definitely gives a lot more stability to the bike, you know. And uh, so again, same idea, I can get uh, the kids climbing on and off there um, with the kickstand uh, on, it's not a problem. Um, I find that it's a little bit more work to, to get this kickstand up <laughs> uh, compared to the Paxter, uh, as is often the case with a, a dual leg, and same with putting it down. Um, I find it easier to get the kids to jump off and then put the kickstand down than having them on there and trying to get the kickstand. Whereas I can have my daughter uh, in the box here and put the kickstand down on the Paxter, no problem. I don't have to have her get off of it. Uh, tire size. Okay, so they're all Schwalbe, which is great. They all have a high degree of puncture resistance, which is awesome. They all have reflective uh, sidewalls, also awesome. They're also all different sizes. <laughs> so, and they're all balloon tires too, I should point out. So we have the Schwalbe Big Ben uh, on the brew hall here. These are 24 inch, both on the front and on the back. I love that. There is just something about the brew hall that I love riding it. Uh, I had one for a year and I often, even though I had other bikes that I could ride, if I was just going out cruising, I'd take the brew hall, even though I wasn't taking any cargo or kids or anything with me. Uh, I think part of what I liked was the riding position and these 24-inch tires. With the 24-inch tires, you'll notice that the derailleur doesn't get too close to the ground. Um, the loading deck is a moderate height here, and uh, it just rides really well. The Spicy Curry takes a different approach. It has a 26-inch Schwalbe Big Ben Plus on the front, so still a balloon tire, nice and wide, good traction on wet and sand, just like all these tires. Um, the advantage of a 26 inch, say compared to 24, is theoretically the attack angle. For example, on the 24 is fairly high. So if you hit a high curb with that, um, you have a less of a chance of easily rolling over it. Whereas the attack angle on a 26 inch, you can see it's gonna be a little bit easier to kind of roll over larger curbs or, you know, span bigger gaps or that sort of thing. So that's 
why uh, Yuba thought, hey, let's put a 26 on inch on the front. Um, then to get the deck lower on the back, and this is a lower loading deck than the brew hall. Let's see if I can kind of get them both in the viewfinder here. You can see that the brew hall is a uh, higher loading deck. Um, to get this deck really low, they put a 20 inch tire on the rear. Now here's the cool thing. Um, they did include this uh, skirt here. That's uh, included with the bike, whereas in the brew hall, the skirt is an optional extra. So with this uh, skirt, it's protecting kids from the spokes. With the 20 inch tire, we've got the spokes are really close together. Now they are on the 24 inch as well. So that gives you a lot of strength, which is really cool. But look how low the derailleur is there. So you really, you know, have to pay attention to that. Don't get too close to a curb or that sort of thing. I mean, it hasn't been a problem. I don't think it'll be a problem. But, you know, I always try to think of what are possible things that could go wrong. And I suppose that's uh, a possibility. Um, we do have a rear dropout here on the uh, rear wheel. Speaking of wheels, and we've got a dropout here on the front of the spicy curry. Same on the brew hall, that is a traditional dropout, and on the back of the brew hall as well. So both the brew hall and spicy curry using quick release. Uh, this is not a quick release on the uh, spicy curry on the back. Nope, it is on the brew hall. Uh, quick release on the front and the rear. Um, the front of the spicy curry is a quick release. Okay, so now let's look at the Paxter. Paxter's reversed. Paxter 20 inch wheel up front. Again, Schwalbe Big Ben Plus. Puncture resistance, lots of spokes for high strength. Look at that suspension fork. Rigid forks on both the brew hall and the spicy curry. I get why they do that on a long tail. It can affect your handling and load distribution, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's, it's tough uh, to do a suspension fork on a, on a, a long, long tail. Um, you know, it's, yeah. And so they they put the balloon tires on there, which helps with that. But I gotta say, <laughs> having the suspension fork is really nice. If you're, you know, got a lot of bumps or, you know, little curbs, like even just off the end of the driveway here, it's a bit of a bump and I definitely feel that a lot more on the brew hall and the spicy curry. So if you're riding somewhere where you've got, you know, difficult pavement, broken pavement, a lot of gravel, a lot of bumps, consider the Paxter because of that suspension fork. Not only does it smooth out the ride for me and for my passengers in the front, it also gives you more control because you're not slowing down to avoid potholes, you're not swerving, and when you do hit bumps, you're still in control of the bike. So I really like that. On the rear of the Paxter, then we have this really wide Supermoto X tire, which I love. We've got a 40 millimeter rim on here, um, and it's nice and big. The Supermoto X is like this super duper tire that's great on gravel and on dirt and on pavement and on wet and just a really well-performing tire. It's also a balloon tire, so high volume of air, low pressure to really smooth the ride out. The other thing that happens with the Paxter is you do get Thud Buster, which is included, also smooths the ride out. And that's definitely, actually, sorry, this isn't a Thud Buster. This is a postmodern. It is a parallelogram style suspension seat post. Really helps smooth things out. It's easy to add those, and I would do that on the Spicy Curry or on the Brew Hall. Definitely add a suspension seat post to uh, smooth out the ride. But, you know, in terms of comfort, to me, the winner is the Paxter with that suspension fork, with the suspension seat post. Um, they all have Ergo grips, which is great. These are the Ergon, which is, again, really high end. These, I don't know, I think they're no name, but they're still very good. They're locking and felt. I think they're using their own ergo grips as well, which are still very comfortable. And, uh, you know, they all kind of have, the, with the brew hall here, you've got a little bit of a, of a swept back bar for an upright riding position. With a spicy curry, it's even more swept back. Interestingly, with the Paxter, we have flat bars. And you may be wondering, why did they use flat bars? Why didn't they use back bars? Well, flat bars, you'll notice mountain bikers always ride with flat bars. Why? Because they need control over the steering of their bike. They're doing aggressive riding. They want to have the best control. And you're going to have the best control and leverage when you have flat bars. 
I don't know if that's why Reese and Mueller did it, but I have a feeling that they wanted you to have complete control over this bike because you've got a load in the front. You can't see your front tire. There it is. So when you're riding, it takes a little bit of getting used to not seeing that front tire. I definitely will tell you that. It'll take two or three rides. Eventually, you get really used to it. It's not a problem. But uh, whereas with the long tails, you know, it, it's an easy transition. With the Packster, it'll take you a few rides, but then, you know, it's not a problem at all. So I do actually like these flat bars. There's a lot of adjustability here, so we can actually, we've got telescopic uh, handlebars on the Packster. I just press the button there, and I can actually lower or raise up the uh, handlebar height, so that's cool. And uh, really all three, but especially the angle of the seat post on the Packster here, and the spicy curry, as you raise the seat post, it moves the seat further away. So generally, if you're taller, you have longer arms, and so that also moves you back and helps with the uh, reach adjustments there. So I talked about tires, I've talked about the drivetrain, I've talked about the motor and the battery, um, talked about accessories. How about standover height? I would say the Paxter has is the easiest to get on and off. It's a very low step here. Um, really easy to climb over. Gives you a lot of confidence when you're stopping. It's 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 easy. Um, the spicy curry is also fairly low, but not as low as the Paxter. And the brew hall would be the highest. It's still very very low. If you look at the numbers on our website, you can see the standover heights. Um, so the brew hall is still you know really easy to get on and off of. Um, but the Paxter would probably be the easiest in terms of the uh, standover height. Other features, the Paxter does have a uh, cafe lock or a wheel lock. So what that does is it puts a metal bar through the wheel. Now the bike can't roll away. Okay, if you're a thief and you're watching this video, then I'm giving you away one of my secrets, but I very rarely use any other means than the wheel lock to secure my Paxter. My thinking is this is a very heavy bike that doesn't even fit in my minivan. It would take a large truck and two people to pick this bike up because that's the only way you're going to move it. When I put the wheel lock on, the wheel will not turn. So now you need two strong people to pick up this bike and put it in the back of your truck and then you can steal it. So yes, um, I should be smarter and probably bring along the chain. And you know, in my defense, if I'm running into the store, I don't do that. But if I'm leaving it somewhere for a long time, yes, I will put a chain through there and secure it to another object. Uh, with the spicy curry, you can also optionally, again, it's optional, buy a wheel lock that goes through here. With the brew hall, there isn't any sort of option for that. You could buy one of the Avis wheel locks though and put it on yourself, but the bike isn't uh, specifically designed for that. I'm trying to think of what else I've uh, missed. Um, saddles, okay, nobody likes the felt saddle that's on this bike except for me. And that's because I ride mountain bikes, so I'm used to it. Um, change the saddle when you buy the brew hall because to something more comfortable, it's more of a cruising style type of bike. So felt really should have put a different saddle on, but I don't think they make any others other than, you know, this kind of hard sport, active, mountain bikey, road bikey kind of, you know, uncomfortable seat. But you know what? Don't buy a bike based on the saddle or the pedals. Those are easy to change. Um, pedals on the brew hall are fairly grippy, soft. You're not going to um, scratch your shins. Uh, the Yuba seat, not bad. A little bit wider, a little bit more comfortable. Again, easy to change pedals. Uh, platform wide pedals with uh, plastic pins here to keep your feet on when it's wet. So I, I do like those pedals uh, for, for myself. Um, they're the VP501s it looks like. On the recent Mueller also uh, Celle Royale seat. I like the seat, but again, you know, I like the brew hall seat. Um, so you may want to change this, but you'll actually find it's probably more comfortable than the brew hall. Um, I love the suspension seat post, that's awesome. And I actually really like these pedals, they are also VP pedals. Um, I think they're a little bit lighter, they still have those grippy points on it for riding in the rain, which is nice, your feet aren't going to slide out of the way. Like I said, they all have lights, all have fenders that are integrated, the lights running off of the main battery. 
If I've missed anything, which I'm sure that I have, uh, feel free to head over to our website, citruscycles.ca, uh, contact us by email or the comments in the YouTube videos or through Facebook, or give me a call, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about cargo bikes, uh, electric cargo bikes, these three bikes, or any other bike in general. And uh, I love cargo bikes. I'd love to get you on a cargo bike that you love. So find a bike that you love riding, and you'll just ride it every day. Again, all of the details can be found on our website at citruscycles.ca.